can only be attributable to human error. You're Where are we going next? And another chance. No one, Mr. Monk. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. That is one big pile of shit. Hello, I'm Alex Ikaiju. I'm Jasmine with. And I'm Eli Watson. And we are Cryptid Campfire. Woohoo! Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptid Campfire. Man, it feels good to be back. But anyways, uh, we 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 are back for the second week in a row, and this time we're talking about, and we're rocking out with the the wiliest, <laughs> most dangerous snake you've ever heard of, Yakamama. That's right, folks. The Yakamama. Mm-hmm. What does it do? You know, normal snake, normal snake things. And where does it live? In a normal snake environment. But what makes it different is its enormous size. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That yes. is right. And uh, before we dig in, before we uh, tackle the snake mama, uh, I just want to say hello, everyone. Uh, we're Crypto Campfire. Uh, every week we get together, we do our own independent research on some kind of cryptid or paranormal subject and kind of come together, freeform jazz style, if you will, and kind of present the findings to you, the listener. And uh, fair warning, we're a little jet lagged. We started our world tour and uh, I'm already feeling the effects of traveling around the globe. I don't know about you guys. I am. I'm a little tired. But you know what? I'm ready to talk about the Amazon because that's where the Yakamama is located. Um, fun fact, the Amazon basin spans eight countries and covers 40% of the South American continent. Um, and it's so vast and unexplored that 200 previously unknown animal species were discovered there just between the years 2011 and 2017. Whoa. So where does Jeff Bezos come in? He's in space. <laughs> yeah you're right he is <laughs> um but um somewhere in the amazon rainforest of ukayali peru lies the legendary yakumama yes i have this quote may i share of course One of the greatest expressions of the Andean cosmovision corresponds to the nurturing of water because we are sons and daughters of Yakumama, Mother Water. She nurtures us, but in order to deserve her nurturing, we must take care of the the environment where she lives, that is, protect nature. Mm -hmm. That comes from (laughs) yakumama.com. I didn't know she had her own website. (laughs) Well, I think they make coffee. What? (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay. Hey, man, don't knock that Central and South American coffee. That's probably the best in the world. I believe you. Haven't you? You've had some before, right? Didn't you bring some back with you after your trip? Yeah, like $25 worth, which is like 25 pounds. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, it's so cheap down there but yeah you touched on in, in a couple of important notes regarding the yaku mama uh, so its name comes from the quechua word yaku meaning water and mama meaning mother obviously um and it is believed that the water mother is the protective spirit of the amazon river um also believed to have given life to all of the animals in the sea um so that's a little bit of the mythology and legend behind her um and I think as we talk about this, we're probably going to get into two different discussions. The Yakumama as this water serpent, um, water mother, legend type of creature that's mm. in mythology, but also the possibility of these giant snakes being a sort of like species that actually exists in the Amazon. Um, but yeah, so we'll probably be talking about both of those camps of thought, but um what did you guys get for a physical description? 
Uh, I got basically picture an anaconda, but a hundred feet tall. Tall. Yeah. Whoa. Um. The, uh, I got giant anaconda with blue scales and eyes that glow like the headlights on a boat. Okay. And why specifically a boat? I don't know why. What? What's she's separate? in the water. Oh yeah, there you go. I also got that it's one of three giant snake mothers. Mm-hmm. Mm. Did we talk about that? We didn't. Um, I read that there were two. So there's the water mother, and then I also read about the earth mother, which is, I believe, the Sachimama. Yes, the Sachimama. Mm-hmm. There's that one. I don't know what the third one is. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I got. See, I don't know. It was hard to find anything about that, and so I got it's. It's called the Boyuna. Boyu, Boyuna. Sorry, I don't speak Portuguese, or as it's known in Spanish as the Cobra Grande. Ooh, Just big big cobra. So I don't know, but having the two makes sense. But then again. Mm. I, I read that there was three, but I could only find mm. the names of two. And mm-hmm. that that's the worrying part is because we're looking into the Yakamama and right, right in the legend, it says there's a giant kind of snake living in the Amazon. And then there's a second one, the Satsumama, uh, which is, I think, what, the Earth mm-hmm. Mother? Yeah. Uh, and a briefly description. It looks more like a constrictor from what I can tell in the legends, but it has a bunch of vegetation growing off its back. Oh. Uh, and the pictures look just a giant snake. It looks like a Pokemon to where it's like a snake and it has an actual forest on its back with giant trees, vines. I think it even said in some legends, little animals live on its back. Mm-hmm. And um, But the worrying part comes in when there's a third one that nobody knows what it is. Well, there might even be more than three. So I also did come across a couple different giant snake legends. I didn't go too deep into them because they weren't our main focus for today, but I'll just go ahead and mention them since Eli brought up the Sachamama. Um, I did actually find the, what was the one you just mentioned again? The, the Boyuna? Is that, was that what you yeah, said? Yeah, the Boyuna. Yeah. Yeah. So Ooh. I did read about that one, shape-shifting snake, giant shape-shifting snake um from what i read and then i also read about the boy tata which is a river serpent with fire powers according Whoa. to brazilian folklore the boy tata was a cave dwelling anaconda who developed an appetite for eating the eyes of his prey and after eating hundreds of eyes his own eyes became filled with a furious fire which he can now use to set fire to forests and fields but Uh, Fortunately, the serpent has a protective spirit and uses his power over fire to protect the forest and villages from flames rather than setting the world ablaze himself. And then the last sort of legendary snake that I read about, (laughs) I don't know if this is how you actually say it, but it makes me really happy to say it like this. It's my boy. (laughs) (laughs) It's M apostrophe B-O-I, my boy. Um, (laughs) But it's a serpent god who lives in rivers. Um, In a fit of rage, he broke the earth and created the magnificent um, Iguazu Falls, which can be seen at the border between Brazil and Argentina. Whoa. And legends claim uh, that there's a spinoff to the mm boy uh, that's said to look like a giant frog called Dat Boy. (laughs) Oh, boy. Um, but the Yakumama and the Sachimama, so the Earth Mother and the Water Mother, um, they're both part of traditional and modern Amazonian art and culture that have been prevalent throughout every stage of Peru's recorded history. So we kind of talked about the physical description a little bit, and then we, we jumped to these other legends. But when it comes to the coloring of the Yakumama, I got a couple different things. Um, I got that 
like regular anacondas, this giant anaconda can have dark green or gray skin and egg-shaped black spots. May also have yellowish spots near the underbelly and orange bars that run from the eyes to the jaws. Um, and we mentioned the length being about 100 feet, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but the head is also six feet wide on its own. Nice. That is big. That is a big snake. <laughs> it is a big snake. And then there are other descriptions that list the color as pitch black with horns um, and then large fiery eyes. It's interesting you bring up the horns. We'll come back to that. But sure as far as it's got powers, doesn't it? She's got powers. Does yeah, she? I, I'm, uh, what powers are you referring to? All of, all of them. All of them. Well, may I, may, I, I, I mean, she does things, but I wouldn't, the things that I'm thinking of, I wouldn't consider powers. I would consider them abilities, like um, engorging herself with water that she can then use to spray and stun her prey in the same way that the Amazon archer fish can spit droplets of water to knock insects out of the water or in, in, insects, insects into the water, out of the sky and into the water to eat. Blows them out of the water, huh? <laughs> no, blows them into the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I got a couple of things here. So I got that she is able to entrance prey into immobility with her eyes. Kind of like Ka from the Jungle Book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stay with me. Stay I'm with nodding me. As, a, as if I understand, but I haven't read the Jungle Book in a really long time. Or you haven't watched, watched it, it? Uh -uh. dude. What, <laughs> dude? The Jungle Book's like my favorite, besides Pinocchio. But anyways, uh, when she's happy, she's able to bless the people with rain and abundant fish. And if she's angry, which she can become angry for no apparent reason, she summons fog, storms, and whirlpools. She can also swallow all the fish so fishermen can't catch them or fly into the sky, causing downpours that ruin crops. Can you imagine a hundred foot snake flying through the sky? <laughs> It'd be pretty, I Is don't know. Is that what you said? Be. She yeah. flies through the sky? <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Is, so she just, is... <laughs> she covers just all, all the ground and air because apparently she can fly, but she mm. also lives in the water but she also travels on land. So she slithers below the waters of winding rivers. But when she's on land, the Yakumu, the Yakumu Mama travels in channels, which she creates herself. So in the manner of game trails. So she makes these trails by knocking over trees that are like 90 feet tall. And she leaves behind craters of devastation, um, sometimes dozens of feet across. And you were talking about, you know, when she's angry, she does this. When she's happy, she does this. Many villagers do attribute her movements to perceived transgressions. So we've talked about how she's like the water mother, like a nature spirit, a protector of the land. Um, so one woman told the story that the Yakumama wiped out a particular portion of her land because that's where the village had been dumping its trash. And so the trash angered the Yakumama. And so, you know, she retaliated by destroying the land. Nice. There was <laughs> a little bit of justice for you. Uh, you mentioned Eli. She has the ability to just like take away all the fish. Like she just eats them all. Mm -hmm. uh, I got this is a attributed to Yaka Mama is so she usually resides in mostly like uh, un 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 undiscovered. Uh, lakes uh, is part of the legend she areas that are like her little kingdom yeah untouched by humans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and so i guess if you trap trespass it'll anger her uh and one of the things she's been known to do is inhale anything within a hundred feet of her if she gets angry yeah uh so i so it's like oh so if you piss her off she'll take away all your fish or she can eat you too for good measure. Yeah. Or maybe she'll fly up in the sky and blow you into the water. You know what? We've solved the mysterious case of the skyfish. 
Um, I don't, I don't know. You got to talk to Doug Highcheck on that one. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah. So she, she's, she's not happy when, when people exploit the resources of the water and the land. Um, so I have something here from the one and only the wealth of accurate and true knowledge, the cryptid wiki. Ooh, with a Z. <laughs> it is, uh, it says that local shamans say that the Yakumama travels to an area called the Boiling River. Ooh. Yes. Is that the end of your statement? That is what the, like I said, the wealth of true and great knowledge. That is what it tells us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alex, did you read anything about the Boiling River? No, this is all new to me. All right. Get ready to learn, guys. So I was reading about this, and I, and I do have some extended information on the Boiling River. And it's related to the Yakumama, but it is kind of like a separate topic. But we're, we're talking about it because it's said that the Yak Yakumama dwells in the Boiling River. So it's worth talking about. Being a cold-blooded animal of the size that she supposedly is, she would need extremely warm temperatures to survive. And so it's theorized that she lives specifically in the Shanae Tempishka, which loosely translates to boiling with the heat of the sun, AKA the boiling river. So hidden in the dense jungle of the Peruvian Amazon is this percolating roiling river. And this is all true. This isn't theory. This isn't legend. This is, this is literally a thing that exists. You can look it up, you can visit it. Um, it's a lot of work to get there and visit it, but this is a real thing. Um, the steaming waters can reach up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's guided by ivory colored stones and guarded by 60 foot walls of lush forest and vegetation. So that kind of connects to what we were talking about with the Yakumama residing in places that are mostly untouched by humans. So locals believe that this river is sacred and that the hot waters held, hold healing powers. And so shamans incorporate them into medicines. Um, the mud of the riverbank is so hot that if you were to walk on it, you would be burned. And if any of the water were to fall on your skin, or if you were to like submerge yourself into the water, you would suffer up to third degree burns in like seconds. Um, and so when you're traveling down that river, you can sometimes see small animals that unfortunately fell into or got lost in or just didn't realize. I don't know how you couldn't realize it was hot as you were getting close to it, but um, animals that can be found floating dead throughout the water. And I have a quote from Andres Rousseau, who contributed to National Geographic when he went down there to research the river. He said, the eyes always seem to cook first, turning milky white. <laughs> Whoa. So, um, oh, goodness. Dude. Could you imagine? <laughs> so, Rousseau, who said that quote, he's a geoscientist, a science communicator, author, educator, and the founder and director of the Boiling River Project. Um, his research colleagues believe that a fault-led hydrothermal feature causes the river to reach such temperatures. Um, the water seeps deep into the earth, heats up underground, and then resurfaces through faults and cracks. There are also um, thermal lakes and rivers that reach high temperatures because they're close to volcanoes and they're magmatic and things like this, but there's no volcanoes around this boiling river, so there has to be another explanation for those hot temperatures. Um, to preserve the sacred river, Rousseau started the Boiling River Project to protect and study the natural wonder of the river in a safe manner. So he details his experience with the river in his book, The Boiling River, Adventure and Discovery in the Amazon. And so it's said that the Yakumama makes her physical home at the site of the first thermal injection that begins to transform the small cold stream into the Boiling River. And so at this site, which... Um, at this site, there's a large sandstone boulder that's naturally shaped like the head of a large constrictor. So like there's this giant rock that looks like a snake head right at the place that people theorize the Yakumama lives. Mm. Um, uh, I'm not saying it because it's like, oh, a naturally shaped. I don't know. It seems supernatural to me. 
I'd seem like it's all true if there's a weird ro- snake rock at this mystical boiling river. Dude, that's weird. That reminds me of like Ogopogo, mm-hmm. where there the natives were like, "Yeah, th- it lives uh, underneath this island," and then they did the sonar and found out there's caves underneath the island. Mm-hmm. You know, and the the island is like the shape of a a you know a monster head of an Ogopogo. Mm-hmm. Dude. It's all real, dude. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, these legends of giant snake gods, they're not just legends. They're real. We got to return to the old ways of worshiping the snake gods or they're going to eat us. Uh, So, yeah, that's just um, some of the general basic information about the Boiling River. There's obviously a lot more that you can read into about it, a lot more you can learn about it. um, But that's just sort of the highlights of what you need to know related to the legend of the Akumama. Whoa. Uh, I mean, that's, that's intense just to know that there's a a real life boiling river. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty nuts. And then related. So this, this kind of ties into the whole idea of the snake legends, because we talked about the different snake gods a little bit earlier. Um, but there's two more that you can possibly learn about that are actually the twin offspring of the Yakumama. So they say that the Yakumama is the mother of two twin water spirits, the hot and the cold water spirit, who each have their own dominion. So the cold water spirit is generally associated with our world, Earth's surface, while the hot water spirit generally keeps to the Earth's subterranean inner world, um, though making occasional excursions to the surface in the form of hot springs and other geothermal manifestations, such as the Boiling River. Um, The interaction of these spirits at the Boiling River was once described to Andres Rousseau as the place where the boys come meet their mother. So sibling rivalries, rivalries allegedly flare up Um, And these fights take the form of the cold water spirit sending rain and cold streams into the boiling river, attempting to dominate its brother and lower the river's temperatures. Um, But the hot water spirit does not yield and retaliates with boiling water and thermal springs, all while the Yakumama is left frustrated at her boy's rivalry. Hmm. Uh, I know it's a little early, uh, but this has got me thinking of uh, a Christmas movie. Oh, yeah, have you guys ever? Oh, yeah, Year Without Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the old stop motion classic. Uh, well, in it, there's the heat miser and the cold miser, and it's these two spirits, the 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 hot and the cold spirits. Uh, I think they're bro- they brothers, and mm-hmm. their mom they're is uh, Mother Earth. Yeah, and uh, they constantly throw fireball and ice balls at each other. Yep. So. Uh, Apparently, uh, if it's good enough for Rankin Bass, it's good enough for world <laughs> mythology. Dude, man, remember I said I was going to write an article on the on the mythology of the Rankin Bass Santa Claus universe? Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was in our second Yeti episode. I said that. And I, I still haven't done It's waiting. It's it's coming. Ooh, uh, maybe a teaser for Christmas 2021. Maybe a teaser for Christmas 2025. Uh-huh. It's going to take a while to do all the research. Anyways, <laughs> I, I have a story here about the Yakumama and what it can do in its anger. Shall I share? Shall I share? Yes. So this comes from a book of creatures.com. After years of work in the forest, a man decided to return to Iquitos. He set off down the Napo River on a large boat, bringing with him his family, servants, lumber, and livestock. Soon a storm broke out, and he ignored warnings from native fishermen that Yakumama was around, only to get caught in a whirlpool. Prayer to God did nothing, but tossing food and aguardiente in calmed the whirlpool. But still, the man pressed on into a sticky, bluish fog that all other animals avoided. 
The storm raged until an enormous wave lifted the boat and lodged it in the branches of a caperona tree. Then they saw Yakumama rise from the river, water flowing off her glistening coils as Yara's rode her back and laughed at the humans. Yakumama proceeded to gobble up the lumber, the livestock, the cargo raft, several trees, and an island before going back under. Whoa. The man, his life's work obliterated, limped <laughs> back to the native village with his family. He was greeted warmly and offered food and a place by the fire, and there he was told of Yakumama the ever-changing. I also got this from the same website. Uh, the presence of outboard motors and large ships have driven Yakumama away, and she is hardly seen nowadays. Mm. Interesting. That's the, that's the complete opposite from what I read about the Yakumama legend persisting as strongly as ever, because in the <laughs> urban... <laughs> In the urban city of Pakalpa, um, it seems that everyone has either sighted or knows someone who has sighted the Akumama. <laughs> well, this site wasn't full of accurate information. Okay, great. Say. Well, so that was a that was a story that supposedly happened a long time ago, right? That was like a legendary kind of story. Yeah, because I, I also have one that took place hundreds of years ago. There was this fisherman from a tribe near Pakalpa, um, which, by the way, is the nearest city to the boiling river. Um, he would mm. go deep into the jungle in a canoe following a little inlet of the river Ukayali uh, to a hidden lake. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of vegetation surrounding the lake. It looked undisturbed by people so he knew it would be a good place for a catch and so as he was looking for the best place to cast his net something stirred in the water and he looked up and a great serpent head emerged from the center of the lake and hovered three feet above the water um the head alone was the size of a fisherman's body which kind of makes sense we talked earlier about how the head is supposedly like six feet wide so that checks out um, the creature stared at him swaying back and forth. And so the fisherman panicked and threw it. It says it, he's, it says he threw himself to shore. So it makes me think that he was in the boat, but like on the shore, like close enough to land because he threw himself out of the boat and onto shore and ran into the forest. And as he looked over his shoulder, he saw the serpent moving towards him through the water. He also began to pray. Um, mm -hmm. And then four i think you say tapirs tapirs mm. i'm i'm not sure oh, what the tapirs tapirs um which are creatures that are similar to pigs um they fell from the sky and into the water so this distracted the serpent i don't know if the serpent was supposed to eat them or if it was literally just like hey look over here there's flying pigs falling from the sky mm -hmm. um but it distracted the serpent just long enough for the fisherman to escape into the forest, the, the forest. And so when he returned to his tribe, he told them all what had happened. Yeah, pretty wild, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 sighting to me is something interesting, especially because like the the four pigs falling from the sky. It's that extra little detail that yeah. sets it apart from other sightings. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's funny, too, is because I found that one, that sighting as well, Jasmine. And uh, the way it the way it has it written for what I found was the fisherman knew he could not escape and prayed for salvation. In this moment, according to legend, four uh, tapirs fell from the sky into the water uh what i'm curious about is who did he pray to i know right i was <laughs> thinking the same thing because like you, you know they, they always talk about uh the hail mary pass you know you gotta you know bet it all hope hope and pray to god and just sometimes god will throw pigs from the sky and hopefully that'll help your situation well, you know what that reminds me of? The, the, the fact that you just mentioned about how we don't know who he prayed to. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of the scene from The Mummy, my favorite movie, where oh. Benny is face to face with Evotep and starts pulling out all of the necklaces uh, representing oh, different yeah. religions and just starts speaking different languages to him to try and find one that works. <laughs> good scene. Good it scene. Is. It is a good scene. 
Um, Benny, dude. Benny sucks. Sorry. <laughs> he got his just desserts, though. Yeah. Spoiler alert. I'm not going to tell you how. If you've never seen The Mummy, you should definitely go watch it. Yeah. Uh, word on the street is Brandon Fraser is down to step back into the role again. He is. He is down to step back into the role. I just saw it yesterday. He did an interview at a convention. Um, he was with somebody and she asked, you know, is there any roles that you would want to revisit? And he said that he would um, like to like to to be Rick O'Connell again. He said he said I can't remember the verbatim quote that he said, but he said something about how um, we could go further with that if we'd like to. So Dude, that makes me really happy. I'm telling you, bro, the, the executives at Universal are listening to our podcast. They heard our pitch. <laughs> about combining the Jack Black and the Brendan Fraser into a Creature from the Black Lagoon movie. It's gonna happen. I have no idea what you're referencing. When did we ever talk about Jack Black? Jack Black, cause he was in King Kong. Right, right. Right, so right. like, he's, he's gonna be helming this Creature from the Black Lagoon expedition and he's gonna bring Rick O'Connell on for extra oh, muscle. Oh, okay. That's the crossover. All right, I'm down. I'm or, down. Uh, See, yeah. <laughs> or, or you know, what if, uh, what if Imhotep resurrected the corpse of King Kong? Whoa, that would be crazy. Then you have giant but mummy King Kong. Imhotep is gone. Uh, he always comes back. There's always a way. You, you can't always keep a, a you can't keep a good mummy down, even with a broken heart. It's true. But anyways, are we moving, are we flash forwarding a little bit? In to, time? Yes. In time? I think to so. the To the Rick O'Connell years? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The early 1900s? It was 1925 yes. when it all started. Yeah, well, actually, this is a little bit before. But um, I got two stories here from the 1900s, the early 1900s. Uh, so I got one. This also comes from the mother load of all good information, the cryptid wiki. It says, in the 1900s, a boat of two men went to put an explosive in the river in hopes to kill the Yakumama. After it detonated, a snake rose from the river covered in blood, but not dead. It swam off and left the men in fear. Okay. I mean, I don't, there's, <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> all she wrote. Uh, this one's a little more detailed. This is from 1906, Major okay. Percy Fawcett. There we go. Yep. So Percy Fawcett, I've actually started reading his book. They turned it into an Amazon movie. Oh, okay. And Am Amazon Prime made a movie about an explorer who went to the Amazon. Amazing. Uh, yeah, it's called The Lost City of Z. Yeah. Oh, and is that the guy? Yeah, it's got Charlie Hunnam, I think his name is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, his book is just his journals. He was looking for basically El Dorado in South America. Uh, he was commissioned by the British government to go explore basically and make trade routes so they mm -hmm. could collect rubber trees. Yeah. Um, but he was also using that to be like, I believe the city's out there and I'm going to find it. And his last expedition, he actually disappeared without a trace. And really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So like, that's like- Wait, one how the, did they find his journals? He did multiple expeditions. Okay. So all his journals are from previous expeditions. They don't, they obviously don't have the last one, okay. but it's pretty interesting. Like he just disappeared and no one knows what happened to him. Interesting. So, he found, but, he found it. He found the lost city and now he's hanging out. Yeah, or he got eaten by cannibals. <laughs> That's <laughs> another theory. Or uh, he's chilling with the Yakomama. He could have been swallowed whole. Yeah. But anyways, for revenge for what he did in 1906. Oh. So he saw a giant snake and shot it, basically. And 62 feet, right? Is what 62. The yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll read the quote here. So oh, I'm just, okay. Yeah. He says, we stepped ashore and approached the reptile with caution. It was out of action, but shivers ran up and down the body like puffs of wind on a mountain tarn. 
As far as it was possible to measure, a length of 45 le feet lay out of the water and 17 feet in it. So that is what, 62? Yeah. Mm. 62 feet. Oh, yeah. The, the next part of the sentence is making a total length of 62 feet. <laughs> Did the math for nothing. <laughs> Such large specimens as this may not be common, but the trails in the swamp reach a width of six feet and support the statements of Indians and rubber pickers that the anaconda sometimes reaches an incredible size, altogether dwarfing the one shot by me. The Brazilian Boundary Commission told me of one killed in the Rio Paraguay exceeding 80 feet in length. It's a big snake. It is big boy, big boy snake. Mm -hmm. And this supposedly happened along the border of Brazil and Bolivia, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, what's interesting about that claim, though, does it say anywhere? You said you're reading the direct book, like you have the book. So does it say anything about how many people were with him when this happened? Because from what I understand, nobody believed him. So yeah, like he came back and he told this story and everyone was like, nah, son, we're in, I don't believe you. Yeah, I, I think he had a lot of native guides with him mm. and, and maybe like two or three other white dudes. Gotcha. So and I think one of them being his son. So like that already it doesn't like, oh, you guys are both making it up, you know, easy gotcha. to say. Um, but no, he reported seeing a lot of crazy stuff like. Uh, giant red-haired giants giant red-haired giants wow and <laughs> gi giant spiders as well i think he reported seeing uh the tribe of the amazons like what wonder woman is based off of oh know. actual like, amazonians like giant women out in the forest like very cool that's crazy but i don't know maybe he was making it all up well Going back to spiders for just a second, um, there was another guy. He was a famous arach arachnologist. Is that how you say it? I think arachnologist. So. so study spiders. Um, his name is Vincent Roth. On the heels of Fawcett, he spent many years surveying the wildlife in Guyana and made a more plausible claim of having shot an anaconda that measured 33 feet, so half as long as the one Fawcett said he saw. Um, but he was unable to produce any evidence to support that claim. Mm. And then uh, we had one more guy that I read about, um, historian Mike Dash. He supposedly published photos of giant anacondas, but his photos didn't include objects that could be used as like a reference, like a scale reference. Like there was nothing to compare them to. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this, I've, I've read about a, a couple different people who supposedly took photos. But the problem I've encountered is I haven't been able to narrow down what the photos are. Like you can, a Google search will provide you with photos, but there's like no way to know which ones are real, who took what, because none of the articles I read had any sort of caption or photo attached that said, this is the photo that so-and-so took on this expedition. It's always just, we and, and sometimes it's not even like, the photos that are attached to some articles sometimes aren't even related to the article. Like it's just an image that somebody pulled from the internet to accompany an, mm -hmm. an article. So for me, it was really hard to find any photos that supposedly really did show this giant snake. Um, and maybe if I looked a little deeper and a little harder, I would be able to find um, some photos from probably the people that we're going to talk about next, which are uh, Mike and Greg Warner. They also supposedly took photos and they have a whole website dedicated to giant snake research. But even when I was going through those photos, I felt like what I was looking at didn't look like a giant snake in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Are, are we ready to talk about the Warners or did, did anybody have anything else they wanted to add before we move on to that? No, I'm ready. Yeah, let's okay. talk about the Warners. So I'll just give the, the brief information that I have. Um, before we were recording, Eli mentioned that he had some stuff, some stuff to say about them. So I'll just give sort of like the brief info. 
Um, in 2009, Mike Warner, who was at the time 73, and his son Greg, who was at the time 44, supposedly took photographs which show a giant snake measuring 130 feet um, with a width of six feet in the river. So these aerial photographs were taken during a 12 day expedition to the Amazon in March, 2009. Um, they do believe that there's more than one giant snake out there. So they believe it's a species and they're trying to, to locate it. And their main target was the confluence of the Napo and Amazon rivers. So Greg had said, we believed these giant creatures uh, favor areas where two rivers meet as one because that provides them with two sources of food supply. And Mike, who worked as a lithographer before retiring, spent his life savings funding this trip. And Greg said, <laughs> Greg <laughs> said that they decided to start their hunt for the snake by following up on the reports of British archaeologist and explorer Colonel Percy Fawcett. So they used sort of his research and his claims to guide their expedition because Fawcett recorded seeing large trails in the forest that they called channels. So uh, the Warners tasked satellites to take pictures of the areas that had those channels um, and because they thought that if they could prove the channels exist, that they could maybe find evidence which pointed towards the existence of the snake. Um, and it's, the quote says, what we didn't expect to get was a picture of one of these snakes in the channel. We think we have found something that is extraordinary. Um, and since coming back from their trip, the father and son had shared like seven, they took like 700 photos and they had five hours of video research or video footage um, that they took on the trip and they shared it with the National Geographic Society in Queens University, uh, Belfast. Um, Greg said he and his father were hoping to attract private funding for another expedition to the Amazon to research their findings further. But as far as I can tell, I don't think they've been able to go back yet. I don't think there has been a follow-up expedition. They're, they have a website, bigsnakes.info, and the homepage states, the purpose of this website is to share information about the discovery of a giant snake in the Peruvian Amazon in March of 2009. We want to share this information with people interested in supporting our work and our aim of returning to the Peruvian Amazon for a follow-up expedition. So as far as I can tell, they haven't been able to go back. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see. I, d I do want to share. So Mike's interest in the Yakumama started 23 years before 2009 what is that 1986 mm. when he saw an image of a goat swallowed whole by a snake and greg his son got involved because he needed to start helping his father read stuff because his father began to lose his vision okay and, and as greg started to read some of this stuff to his father he began to get really into it and they decided to just go and look for it as Jasmine said, they have 700 photos and five hours of footage. Um, all those old articles, like I was finding a bunch of old articles from the BBC and stuff, they all point to a website called bigsnakes.net, which is down. I think they switched over to bigsnakes.info, which is where mm -hmm. that's that's still up and current. I also found their YouTube channel. As did where, I. Yeah, where they have a lot of stuff uploaded. Yeah, all, all those same videos, though, are also on the website in one of the tabs. Um, the last video that they uploaded was taken in August of 2010. Um, and in that video, they had just launched their campaign to raise private funds for their second expedition, which, again, I don't think they've actually had yet. Um, and in that video, the 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 last kind of more relevant video because the YouTube channel also has like personal videos on there that don't relate to the research at all. There's like a wedding video and stuff like that. Um, but the last relevant video that's there makes connections to Leviathan, which is the biblical sea monster killed by God. Mm. Um, they give the coordinates that they believe to be the site where you will quote, drop right on top of the creature. Um, but 
even though that video is like 10 years old, Mike's blog on the website is still being updated. Like Eli mentioned, the website is current, which I just find so crazy because Mike's like 85 years old now. Yeah. And he's still like going. He really wants to like prove the existence of these giant snakes. And on that website, there's a whole archive of their research files, an entire expedition report, which I did not read. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no, someone's not getting their scholastic award this week. Uh, uh, no gold. Star. I did my I did my due diligence last week reading a hundred page thesis. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that this time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So in 2009, in March, when they got all their photos and stuff, they, it looked like they might pick up some funding from National Geographic, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I found uh, a correspondence that they posted of an email with people at National Geographic from April of 2010, and they get rejected by National Geographic. It's pretty sad. Mm -hmm. But whatever i mean so that's why they were trying to raise funds for the, another uh, follow-up expedition which i don't know if they've been on either and as far as their evidence goes i was really interested in seeing the photos and stuff mm -hmm. and i'm i'm sorry i'm not convinced like of what they took because i'm having a hard time seeing the channels that they're talking about mm -hmm. they look like just natural waterways you know, uh, they have a picture of one, they have two pictures side by side, supposedly of a snake in the river. And it, the second one says taken five seconds later, position has changed, or it looks like the position has changed, but these are all aerial fo photographs. Mm. It looks, it looks like a sandbar in the river. And then they kind of curved around it and took a picture of it at a different angle. And now they're trying to say that it moved and it's like, no, it looks the same just from a different perspective. I don't like, I'm not claiming to be some sort of expert here, but it just, it doesn't, there's nothing that stands out to you. That's like, Oh my God, this is, this is the Yaku mama. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. It, and I was, I, that's what I was talking about earlier. I think when I was looking at the photos on their website, I wasn't even quite sure what order I was supposed to be looking at the photos in mm -hmm. right. because the, the little caption that you're talking about is, is literally like red text that they've superimposed onto the photograph to say, this is what we're looking at. But I don't even know which photo is supposed to come before that mm -hmm. because they're mm -hmm. all just listed on this webpage. Um, but yeah, you can check that out on their website, bigsnakes.info, if you'd like to make your own personal judgment about it. Yep. Yeah. And you know, this is this is so so random. But it's a little fun fact. Uh we're talking about years. Uh night you said maybe 1986 he went down there, him and his dad. No, uh he went up there in 2009. His intro oh, oh, no. started in 1986. That's right, that's right. So his interest started in 1986. He saw a video of what a, a snake eating a goat or something. Yeah. Yeah, a photograph. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I read that, but I'm like, how does seeing a picture of a snake eating a goat make you go, "There's giant 130 foot snakes in the Amazon"? Well, well because the connection. That's. I mean, it'd have to be a pretty big snake to swallow a goat whole. Like, it mm. wasn't like bitten apart. It was swallowed whole by a snake. So like. That requires a very large snake. <laughs> yeah, very, very big snake. Gotcha. But, Sorry, uh, Alex, what were you saying? No worries, no worries. Yeah, so 1986, and then 2009, he, they finally get to go down there. Mm -hmm. uh, 1986 is the year Watchmen came out. Oh, boy. The comic book by Alan Moore and uh, Dave Givens. And then 2009, the movie version came out by Zack Snyder. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. So weird. That is so weird. Right? parallels yeah man that movie sucks <laughs> it let's just say it completely misunderstands the graphic novel completely yeah but i mean is there any uh, further explanation or explanations uh, expeditions 
sightings of the Yaku Mama. Uh, I think there was the famous Zack Snyder cut of the Yaku Mama. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I didn't come across anything else. I just kind of um, noted that when you're doing Yaku Mama research and giant snake research, um, the Warners are kind of the people that you come across the most because I, I feel like they're kind of leading the charge on trying or they were I mean they still are like I said the blog is still getting updated I think the last at the time of this recording the most recent post um let me see here uh as at the time of this recording their last entry was on September 6th of 2021 so this month they're still uploading stuff Dang. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. That's cool. So what do you think, guys? Yakumama, real or not real? Uh, I mean, if you if you break it down, you look at all the facts. Uh snake gods, they're real. They're out there. And, as, and unless we return to the ways of worshiping the snake gods, I think we're in a lot of trouble, folks. <laughs> uh, Alan Moore had it right when he said, I'm going to serve a giant snake god because he wrote Watchmen. What are you doing? Dude, uh, there's a theory floating around on the internet. I can't remember who kind of said it, but it's not really a theory because it's kind of based on fact, but... Uh, it's this idea that reptiles don't ever stop growing. Mm -hmm. Like you look at turtles and gators and stuff and snakes even, you know, in the first couple of years, they grow the most, but mm -hmm. they never actually stop growing. They just grow less, mm -hmm. you know? So like a snake might grow a foot in a year in the first year of its life, but then the second year it'll grow only six inches, you know? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, and so on so forth but it never actually stops growing it just grows less and less and less so if you had a snake that lived to be 100 years you know who knows how long that would be how big that would be yeah. you mm -hmm. know like you know turtles are a good example of that you know because they actually they don't stop growing they just keep growing mm -hmm. you know you look at charles darwin's turtle that's been alive for like 125 years the thing's ginormous you know that thing's mm -hmm. the size of a boulder, you know? Yeah. And well, it's still, yeah, go ahead. I, I was going to move on. Uh, it's related, but new sort of topic. Were you? No, go ahead. Talking about giant turtles. Well, the largest snake species in the world is the green anaconda. Um, and the largest green anaconda on record is 29 feet long, weighing 550 pounds. Um, but the ancestors of today's anacondas did reach giant proportions. So we've got the Titanoboa, which is the largest snake species in the world. Um, it's prehistoric. Uh, Colombian monster is estimated to have reached lengths of 42 feet or more. So even then, still not reaching 60, 130 feet. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then there's a uh, Gigantophis which I was reading as something else. And I was like, this cannot be how you say it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's my own thing that I have to learn how to pronounce things properly. It's spelled G-I-G-A-N-T-O-P-H-I-S. Gigantifus. I wasn't reading it as a soft. Uh, yeah, I wasn't reading it as a soft <laughs> P-H. I was reading it as a hard P. I was like, this cannot be right. <laughs> um but Gigantophis, who uh, held the title of the world's largest snake before the remains of Titanoboa were unearthed, <laughs> and that snake was capable of growing up to 36 feet or more. So even the largest snakes on record were not as large as the Yakumama or the black boa that the Warners are claiming to have photographed. Um, so... That, uh, those are those are some big snakes in history dude yeah but they're not the biggest because the yakumama is bigger correct clearly. correct um did you want to talk about the 
claim of there being horns. Didn't you say, didn't, wasn't there something you wanted? Oh, to yeah. Uh, the Warners say that they, what they have photographed appears to have horns. Mm-hmm. Again, that I, I, don't, that I don't know. There, there's something else about um, a possible, it seems to have like the horns are bumps, but inside are tentacles that come out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or like antenna, yeah. but yeah. So, so know. descriptions of the Akumama have included the snake as having horns on its head. Uh, and this feature has led Warner to his hypothesis that the Yakumama could be a prehistoric version of the modern day Sicilian. Um, Most of the 50 or so species of Sicilian that are cataloged do have a groove running along either side of their head that contains a retractable tentacle. So if these tentacles are out and they're on a head, then observers may, you know, mistake them as horns. Uh, what what do the tentacles do on that one snake? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, they just, they just sure, have them. I'm sure it serves a purpose, um, but it wasn't mentioned in the articles that I was reading. Um, yeah. Okay. It's also not a snake. It's an amphibian, right? That looks like a snake. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, hmm. Let me double check um right now you said it's a cilian right or yeah Um, yeah amphibian yeah they're limbless though so uh limbless amphibians serpentine amphibians that mostly live in the in the live hidden in the ground and in stream substrates making them the least familiar order of amphibians so they look like snakes but they're not snakes Uh, just just to be confusing right yeah um did you guys get anything else for like possible explanations about the sightings or anything like that no but you skipped over my favorite part of the titanoboa which is the smithsonian has a life-size model oh really that's eating a crocodile (laughs) <laughs> amazing yeah it's cool right <laughs> this should uh have that be the uh standard for most life-size models you know here's our titan boa eating a crocodile here's our uh trinosaurus model make eating a crocodile here's our replica of uh george washington eating a crocodile <laughs> um well as with most of our cryptid sightings, one of the most common explanations for a Yakumama sighting is simply misidentification and like your eyes playing tricks on you. Because estimating even a normal anaconda's size in the wild is extremely difficult because they're usually curved and coiled. They're not stretched out unless you happen to be in an aerial shot watching it slither through the streams and whatever. <laughs> um, So it's easy for a person to imagine that it's, you know, longer than it actually is. And then there's also the fact that photographs can be edited. Snake skins can actually be stretched, which I did not know. Um, And so neither one is really considered a reliable source of evidence for a giant anaconda in the scientific community. And then I don't have any additional explanations for like actual sightings, like of people seeing this giant snake and then having to try and figure out what it is. But if we want to talk about the channels that the Warners mentioned and kind of based their expedition off of, you know, that Fawcett also saw, there is actually an explanation for why those channels might exist. And it is that they are characteristic of mudslides and flash floods. Now, how often mudslides and flash floods happen in the Amazon, I'm not sure. But that could be a natural explanation for why these channels exist. Yeah. Uh, I know the Warners have some pictures of some of these channels. Mm -hmm. And they point to like uprooted trees and stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's like a flash flood could uproot a tree. So I don't know. (laughs) Some are are so diverse as the Amazon too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just in terms of like the weather's you know and the temperatures down there is you know it's its own little world pretty big world mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I get what you're saying for sure. It's, it's, I don't know. It's weird. I, I, again, nothing that they have on their site is like, this is definitive. Like, like Jasmine said, a flash flood could cause that, mm-hmm. you know? So I don't know. Where, and plus where? there's even, there's even water in the trackway mm-hmm. in the photos. So it's like, that could just be residual water left over from the flood. Yeah. I don't know. Well, hopefully they get the money to go back down there again and we can hear more about what they find. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I'm going to get on the phone with small town monsters right now. Yeah. <laughs> like you guys got to fund this. Oh man. I mean, everyone's being pretty lackadaisical when there's a threat of giant snakes down there. That can fly in the air. Yeah. And, and shoot have- you into the water have mind powers that's crazy <laughs> oh and isn't there some kind of snake with heat vision we were talking about yeah like, is there fire eyes it, it yeah it ate a hundred eyeballs yeah oh yeah shoot heat out of its eyes and oh luckily it's got a protector spirit because you know if there's one thing gods are they're never fickle right <laughs> <laughs> oh man Does that bring us to a close? It brings us to pop culture, if anybody has anything. Uh, You know, kind of, I guess in the sense of, because we're talking about the Akamama legend is it's a giant snake. Right. And just giant snakes have been in pop culture for at least the past 50, 60 years. I I can think of just random examples of just, well, here's giant snake monsters. Yeah. The good visual. Uh, good threat. I mean, sci-fi's uh, sci-fi channel has nothing but what uh, giant crocodile versus mega snake and you Lake know, Placid, Lake Placid, uh, snark, uh, shark, sharknado versus you know hurricane of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the giant snake is definitely a Hollywood horror movie star. So, and there's been lots of crossovers, like you said. Um. Also, in the Peruvian rainforest, there's countless hotels, tourist agencies, restaurants that are named after the giant snake um, and giant snakes in general. Um, One of Uruguay's most beloved writers, Horatio Quiroga, um, wove giant anacondas into many of his jungle tales. In 1921, he even named one of his books Anaconda in honor to in honor of the powerful beast. So yeah, the the Yakumama by name might not have lots of pop culture references, um, but giant snakes in general are everywhere. But there is one more fun thing that I wanted to mention. Ogopogo Brewing in San Gabriel, California does have a Yakumama Hazy Triple IPA. I don't know what that means because I don't know anything about beer, but they got that. Whoa. It's a triple IPA. That's nuts, dude. Yeah. And you said this is in San Gabriel, California? Mm-hmm. Ogopogo Brewer Brewing? Yep. What in tarnation? We need to go. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're here for some uh, Ogopogo and that Yakamama booze. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's about all I got today. Yeah. So I think that brings us to a close. Mm -hmm. And speaking of close, you can get yourself some Ah! cryptid Cryptid campfire merch, some shirts uh, at Mm cryptidcampfire.com. It's the only place in the world where you can get it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Except no substitutes. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's at Cryptid Campfire on all three of those. Leave us a happy review on Apple Podcasts. That helps us rank and get us more notoriety. Uh, If you're watching this, uh, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the Paranormal Network. You know, keep keep the spice coming. Mm -hmm. On top of that, if you've done all those things and you're like, I need more. Go over to our Patreon page. $5 a month gets you exclusive content. That's uh, 
two exclusive episodes per month, two new exclusive episodes, as well as immediate access to the entire backlog of exclusive episodes we've done already. And you also get a new wallpaper done every month designed by Alexander Daikaiju. Mm -hmm. Something a little fancy, something a little uh, cool for your digital devices. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in seeing some of his other artwork, how can I do that, Alex? Oh, if you want to find out more, I'm Alex Daikaiju on Instagram. That's Alex D-A-I-K-A-I-J-U. I post a lot of monster cryptid. Uh, I even do my own comics for fun and profit. Be sure to check them out. Uh, and my sources today, uh, you know, traveling the globe, uh, going on all kinds of adventures. And I would be lost if it wasn't for the USS Dreadnought Wikipedia. With uh, It had two paragraphs on the Yakamama. Amazing. <laughs> Count them, too. It was amazing. <laughs> I uh, even used livinginperu.com, untoldstoriesforyou.blogspot, and a abookacreatures.com. I think Eli mentioned that place, too. They're a lot of fun, but use them with caution. Yeah. And uh, speaking of caution, uh, going forward... Let's make sure if we do any more mummy related movies, Brandon Fraser's got to be included or hell will be paid by <laughs> Jasmine May with. It's true. It's true. Um, if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can do so on Instagram or Twitter. My name is the same on both pro, uh, platforms. It's Jasmine May with J A S M I N E M A E W I T H. Um, my sources for today also included living in Peru, peru.info untapped mental floss the urban legends and cryptids page on amino apps weirdanimalreport.com atlas obscura boilingriver.org bbc news mythology.net discovery uk belfast telegraph mike and greg warner's youtube channel and as well as their website bigsnakes.info well ho what a list and every good list deserves a second reading do it again jasmine no, no, no. no. <laughs> Just kidding. And we're traveling around the globe, going on adventures. But the one man who's gone on so many adventures, he's sick of it. He doesn't want to see the open road ever again. The Eli Watson. I don't know if that's entirely true. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you guys can follow me at the Eli Watson on Instagram. I am, I am currently editing some photos of my previous adventures so i can put those up and you guys can see the spice Ooh. anyways uh and my resort sorry go ahead I no, what were you, you gonna say what were you gonna say it's it's irrelevant i'll say it when you're done i forgot you still had to list your sources <laughs> okay uh my sources for today come from yakumama.com uh a book of creatures.com, Wikipedia, the cryptids wiki, Salem news.com, big snakes.info, as well as Greg Warner's YouTube channel as well. And I believe that is everything. Nice. And uh, what I was going to say before I so rudely interrupted you before you were saying your sources was I wanted to mention. Um, you guys should check out our YouTube channel as well, because we're uh -huh. going to be getting ready to post a vlog soon, I believe. Yes. Ladies um, and gentlemen, Halloween times are around the corner. Is that where we're going to leave it? We're just going to tease it. Yeah. We're going to tease it. It's been a long time since we've done a vlog, so. It has. Guys, we should just do more stuff together. I mean. That. That's our motto, Proof of Campfire. Uh, you guys, we stuff. should do more stuff together. And do more stuff. I mean, it has, been such, it has been such a long time since we've been able to do a vlog because of the pandemic. So, but, you know, we were able to get together recently and do something fun. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have a fun vlog out soon. Indeed. Indeed. And with that... I bid you adieu, have a good night or day or morning, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Woohoo. Ciao. How do I stop? Oh.
This podcast is a part of Straight Up Strange Productions. Discover more shows like this one at straightupstrange.com.